coverage you can count on. We 31 Morning News starts now. This morning, a live look at New Orleans and the French Quarter right now, empty right now, but Hurricane Zeta eyeing the Louisiana coast as it's expected to make landfall in the U.S. tonight. Way 31 meteorologist Rob Elvington in the Storm Tracker Weather Center for us this morning, tracking how the hurricane will impact us here in North Alabama. Well, speaking of North Alabama, voters are now on the clock. Here's a live look over very cloudy Madison County this morning through the Storm Tracker Skycam Network. You now have less than 48 eight hours before your window for an absentee ballot closes. We have more on how you can participate in a live report. Plus new developments this morning in the controversy over the removal of Madison County's Confederate monument. We hear from the commission chairman in a live report just a few moments away. Thanks so much for waking up with us on this Wednesday morning. It's October 28th. I'm Pat Simon. And I'm Marie Waxel. We are getting off to a soggy Wednesday morning all across North Alabama. Let's bring in meteorologist Rob Elvington. It will talk to us about how this is associated with Zeta, right, Rob? Yeah, we're already seeing some, what we say, indirect impacts from Zeta. We have a warm front moving through, but it's getting some of Zeta's tropical moisture. So already getting some of that rain this morning associated with Zeta. But there you go. There's Category 1 Zeta heading towards the Louisiana coast. And this is the latest track from the National Hurricane Center. We actually get a new one in in about an hour at the 7 o'clock update. And it is now forecast to be a Category 2 later this afternoon. It's possible that it'll go up to a Category 2 and and start to weaken as it heads towards the coast because the water temperatures just offshore of Louisiana quickly drop off. So hopefully that is the case here later today. And then it races to the northeast and you'll notice that this track right here, it does graze parts of Sand Mountain and we're concerned about the winds here overnight tonight into Thursday morning. We're going to be tracking some pretty strong winds. So as I just mentioned, we're already seeing some of those indirect impacts here. Nothing widespread right now, kind of just some passing showers, but just about all of North Alabama has some wet road conditions because the rain has been moving through over the last four to five hours and you'll notice more rain to go just off to our south. We've even seen a few embedded lightning strikes so concerned about some uh, thunderstorms even for the kids heading out to the bus stop this morning and as the kids head home later today. Temperatures in the upper 60s make sure they have the rain gear but it's going to be a warm start this morning and right around the low to mid 70s for the way home but again some thunderstorms are possible. So there you go there's Zeta making landfall later today but look how quickly it is racing into our area overnight tonight and into your Thursday morning. We'll have the latest and what we expect coming up over the next 20 minutes. All right, thank you, Rob. Right now, Alabama is under a state of emergency as people across the state prepare for yet another major weather event in Hurricane Zeta. Yeah, the storm crossing the Gulf, making landfall along Mexico yesterday. And like Rob said, it has its sights now set on Louisiana tonight. Its remnants aiming straight for Mississippi and Alabama. As Alabama prepares for Zeta, people across the southeast, specifically southeast Louisiana, are monitoring the storm closely and preparing for a record-breaking landfall. Take a look at this. You can see people preparing sandbags ahead of the storm. That's what they did most of the day yesterday. The storm's expected to make landfall again tonight along the state's coast. People say preparing for yet another storm is daunting and shocking. Frustrating because, like... Damages from this one could be one thing, and then damages from like another one is one thing, and you can't like keep up, like catch up with it. It is crazy. I've never seen it like this before. You know, with the pandemic, and now you know we got six or seven storms that came up on us. You know, it's, it's just it's, it's crazy. You know, well, you can't stop Mother Nature. A lot of them, you hear that, struggling to find the words, you can't stop Mother Nature. If Zeta hits Louisiana, it will be the fifth named storm to hit the area in 2020. That's the most ever to hit the state in one season. New Orleans mayor says because of the busy season, the city is prepared for this next storm. As we have demonstrated throughout this hurricane season, even prior to the hurricane season starting, that the city of New Orleans is prepared. Seems like uh, more and more prepared every single time. Voluntary and mandatory evacuations were issued as part of preparations for the storm. Another area that's expected to get remnants of the storm is Mississippi. Cities along the Mississippi Gulf Coast issuing mandatory harbor evacuations. It's from Long Beach to Biloxi and Gulfport. People were told to leave by late last night. And with the chance of storms here in North Alabama this week, make sure that you download our Way 31 Storm Tracker weather app. It will keep you up to date on any watches and warnings in your area.
Happening right now, you're taking a live look over Madison County through our Storm Tracker SkyCam network. The clock is ticking to apply to absentee voting in Alabama. That deadline is tomorrow. Way 31 Sierra Phillips is live for us right now at the Madison County Courthouse. Sierra, we understand it could be a busy day there today. Exactly, guys. Right now, take a look around me. It's quiet here at the Madison County Courthouse, but if today is anything like yesterday, lines could be wrapped around the building. Take a look at those lines yesterday. Now, the only way to vote early here in Alabama is with that absentee and mail-in voting. That's because no excuse early voting is against the law in the state of Alabama. Secretary of State John Merrill says if lawmakers decide decided to change the current law prohibiting no excuse early voting, it would cost the state more money and wouldn't make a huge impact on voter turnout. But some activists we spoke to say they disagree. The majority of our country is doing it. The majority of those that are engaged are finding success. And not only that, but there's not only more participation, but there's also more resources. Now, employers in Alabama are required to allow their employees to have time off in order to vote. That employee just has to give their employer some notice and they have an hour to vote. Reporting live in Huntsville, Sierra Phillips, Way 31 News. Right, Sierra, thank you so much. We already know thousands of people here in Madison County already sent in or requested their absentee ballots ahead of Election Day. In fact, officials are seeing an increase of more than 250%. If you already have your absentee ballot, it has to be postmarked by Monday. Now, here's a look at some of those deadlines ahead of the election, which is less than a week away. You can find all these deadlines on our website at waytv.com. This morning, Madison County Commission Chairman Dale Strong is addressing the relocation of the Confederate monument. After months of contention, the Madison County Commission moved that monument to Maple Hill Cemetery last Friday. Commissioners say they were able to move it legally. Way 31's Ashley Carter joins us live now. Ashley, what did Chairman Dale Strong have to say? Strong really wanted to stress to us that the commission went through a legal process to relocate the monument. He says he knows people had different opinions about how they did choose to relocate the monument, but says they feel like they chose the best and most appropriate way to move and preserve the monument. Strong told us he hopes they will look back and realize they did the right thing. He told us because the state's historical commission did not respond to their waiver within 90 days, they were able to relocate the monument legally without the state's permission. Strong told us if the attorney general's office still feels like they broke the law, it would be the county's responsibility to pay the $25,000 fine, but he says he does not feel like they broke any laws. We did everything within the law to do it. The 90 days expired. The committee never took it up. Uh, so our thing is, is we did everything within our power. Uh, we feel good about our, about our position. The commission did work with the city to relocate the monument. We learned the city of Huntsville, Huntsville spent about $33,000 to move the statue. Right now, it's not clear if the attorney general's office is taking any action, but Strong says that the commission is going to move forward and look to do other things for now. Live in Huntsville, Ashley Carter, Way 31 News. All right, thank you for that update, Ashley. Now, the monument controversy has stretched across North Alabama. Officials in both Florence and Albertville are trying to decide what to do with Confederate monuments there. Two weeks ago, the Florence City Council passed two resolutions. Both of them seek permission to remove the monument outside the Lauderdale County Courthouse. On Monday night, we told you a resolution was presented to the Albertville City Council to remove the Confederate flag and monument from outside the Mar Marshall County Courthouse. Well, this morning we've learned there will be a protest outside the Albertville Courthouse. The No Peace Until It's Down March will meet at 4 o'clock this afternoon outside the Marshall County Courthouse, and the actual march itself is set to begin at 5. The event is hosted by Say Their Names, Alabama. 
And there's a look at downtown Decatur. We got wet roads this morning. We have plenty more rain to go through the morning commute and uh, some pockets of poor visibility. So please give yourself some extra time. 69 degrees. It is warmer this morning. So if you're packing the rain gear, just keep, a, uh, keep in mind it's going to be a little on the warm side for the kids heading out to the bus stop. And there is also that threat for a few embedded thunderstorms. On the way 31 real-time traffic alert. Thankfully, we're not seeing anything just yet. But again, we've got widespread wet roads with some pockets of some heavier rain moving in later this morning and this afternoon. And from today all the way through tomorrow afternoon, we could see two to three inches of rain, highest totals east of I-65, but really concerned about those stronger wind gusts uh, after midnight tonight into tomorrow morning as what's left of Zeta races through our area. And we could even see that flash flood threat with some of that heavier rain. Zooming in closer to Lawrence, Morgan County, even parts of Franklin County, this is where we're seeing some of those batches of some heavier rain. It's pretty isolated in nature right now, but zooming out again, you can see that next wave of rain setting up just off to our south. So kind of in and out of the these waves all day today. But there you go. There is Category 1 Hurricane Zeta quickly racing to the north right now at about 17 miles per hour. And by this time, tomorrow morning, again, it's already in our area and we are going to pick up quite a bit of rainfall. Be prepared for some storms later today, but again, those stronger winds later tonight. We'll have the latest coming up. This morning, another warning from health officials why some say the worst is yet to come in the coronavirus pandemic. Plus, new information this morning coming to light about the president's finances, how much debt his lenders reported to have forgiven. Welcome back, everybody. Time right now, 6.16. Right now on your Wednesday morning, you're looking live through a panda cam. <laughs> it's part of our Storm Tracker Sky Cam Network on this Wednesday morning. Some soggy conditions out there as you're out and about. Uh, be careful. You may want to leave a little bit early this morning because of all the rain out there. Drive carefully. Watch out for those school zones this Wednesday morning. Well, happening now, authorities across Alabama are searching for two men believed to be stealing guns out of cars parked at hotels. And some of those thefts happen right here in Huntsville. Take a look at your screen. Police said Rodarius Mitchell and Javante Taylor are behind about 50 car break-ins earlier this month along 565 and downtown Huntsville. There are also suspects in similar car break-ins in Decatur, Coleman, Oxford, and Tuscaloosa. We want to turn our attention right now to the coronavirus pandemic in North Alabama. We do expect an update from the Department of Health in just a few hours from now. This is where we stand right now. Right now, there are nearly 160,000 confirmed total cases across the state. Nearly 2,700 people died from the virus. Both of those numbers are expected to increase today. Now, the infection rate of coronavirus across the country is concerning health officials. The U.S. is now averaging nearly 70,000 new infections every day. That's the most in nine months. 37 states are seeing the number of average cases increase. 11 states are reporting record numbers of patients in the hospital. Officials now warning the worst may be yet to come. If we took some aggressive targeted steps right now, we could potentially forestall the worst of it, but we're not going to do that. I think we're right now at the cusp of what's going to be exponential spread in parts of the country. America's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, says the U.S. never fully recovered from the first wave of the virus. One poll shows more than 60 percent of Americans think the federal government is actually making recovery from coronavirus worse. So this morning, we're checking your investments right now. Stock futures are down big at this hour. Asian shares are re rebounding right now. And again, so the big concern is the surge in coronavirus cases and what happens next with that stimulus plan, as well as digesting some big company earnings reports. Well, this morning, we are learning President Trump had more than $270 million in debt forgiven since 2010. That's according to the New York Times. The Times reports that when a few of his hotels had financial problems, his lenders granted him years of time to repay his debts. Most of those were ultimately forgiven. The Times also reports that the president paid almost no federal income tax on those forgiven debts. Weather coverage you can count on with meteorologist Rob Elvington and the Way 31 Storm Tracker Early Warning Radar Network. It's 619 right now on your Wednesday morning, already off to a wet start. That's soggy out there. Grab the rain gear. Here's Rob. 
Yeah, we're already starting to see that tropical moisture out ahead of Zeta moving into North Alabama. Technically, this is due to a warm front, but if it wasn't for Zeta, we would not be seeing this rain right now. And you'll notice it's 70 in Muscle Shoals, wet roads, so just a mild muggy start on this Wednesday morning, and we're going to continue to see waves of rain moving in. So there's a look at the temperatures right now. Upper 60s throughout Huntsville and Decatur, 70 again in Muscle Shoals, 68 degrees in Scottsboro. And as we zoom in a little bit closer to places like Franklin County, Lawrence County, Morgan County, this is where we're seeing some pockets of some light to moderate rainfall, a little bit of a low for some areas over the last couple of hours. But zooming out, you can see these next kind of batches of rain starting to approach our area. And they're also starting to kind of widen and strengthen a little bit. So we're going to see some pretty heavy rainfall at times, even this morning and into this afternoon. We'll zoom in a little bit closer. This is moving at about 25 miles per hour to the north northeast. And places like uh, Jones Chapel at around 713, that's when you can expect this developing line to move in. Uh, Coleman at 716, Arab at about 7. 51, Russellville at about 759, Decatur at 827, 847 for the city of Madison. And we have seen a few lightning strikes this morning, so even some embedded thunderstorms will be possible. And again, this is all out ahead of Hurricane Zeta. There you go, Zeta right there. And we'll zoom in a little bit closer. And one thing you'll notice towards the end of this animation, we're starting to see that eye starting to clear up, which is showing some signs of strengthening. And if we switch over to the infrared satellite, we're starting to get these darker colors showing up, indicating much stronger thunderstorms starting to wrap around Zeta. So that's concerning. That is a sign of strengthening. It was pretty lopsided earlier this morning and last night, but showing some signs of strengthening as it races towards the Louisiana coastline. A look at future radar and satellites, 730 this this morning, we'll let this run all the way through the late morning hours and into lunchtime and just kind of one wave after another of some moderate to even some heavy rainfall with some embedded thunderstorms. You'll notice that this line kind of lifts to the north right around about three o'clock. So it's possible that we get lucky as schools let out later today. We get a little bit of a gap, but again, more rain continues to move in all the way through this evening. So this is all out ahead of Zeta. The concern will be overnight tonight into the overnight hours and into your Thursday morning. Look at this. This is around 2 a.m. tomorrow morning. All of this yellow orange, red, and even pink showing up. That is what's left of Zeta. That's the actual storm system. And you'll notice that it quickly races to the northeast right through areas east of I-65. At the same time that we're seeing all this heavy rain, we could be tracking some winds gusting around 50 miles per hour for elevated areas. So areas uh, in Sand Mountain, even up top here in Montesano, we could be tracking some pretty strong winds uh, tomorrow morning and into the early afternoon hours. But finally, we start to dry things out. And we do have a cold front coming through tomorrow. And that's going to allow for the temperatures to drop very quickly into Friday and this weekend. You'll notice afternoon highs in the upper 50s on Friday, but look at the lows down to 44 low on Monday morning, 39 for low by next Tuesday. And uh, the thunderstorm threat, it's mainly off to our south and southeast. This is for severe thunderstorms today and into Thursday morning. But regardless of the thunderstorms, we're just going to see some strong gusty winds as that storm moves through our area. Look at the winds overnight tonight into Thursday morning. Winds gusting close to 50 miles per hour for pl places like Fort Payne and still very gusty all the way through the late morning hours uh, with winds around about 20 to 30 miles per hour from the shoals all the way to Sand Mountain. All right, thank you, Rob. Elation in L.A., a world championship more than three decades in the making, and it happened in one of the most unconventional seasons in history. We have reaction and how the coronavirus played into the final game of the 2020 season. Dave Roberts. That went straight three. Dodgers have won it all. The wait is over. The Los Angeles Dodgers winning the World Series the first time in 32 years. L.A. beating the Tampa Bay Rays 3-1 to one in Game 6 to capture that title. Hey, you heard Rob Elvington call it last week. <laughs> Dodgers and 6. It's the Dodgers' first title since 1988. Dodgers shortstop Corey Seager was named the series MVP. But what's 2020 without a little controversy, right? Take a look at this. Dodgers third baseman Justin Turner returned to the field for the postgame photo. He was pulled from the game in the eighth inning after being tested, after testing positive for coronavirus. You can see he started off wearing the mask, but he took it down to get his photo taken. Dodgers in six. I called it last week. For, you know, people pay a lot of money to get that type of sports. And I just give it out for free on air. <laughs> We're also tracking, of course, some rain this morning. And we are tracking that wet commute. A few embedded thunderstorms are possible. And, of course, all of this associated with Zeta. And we will see direct impacts from Zeta by about this time tomorrow morning. And we'll have the latest of what you can expect in the next half hour.